welcome back to our pro streaming series, Cyborg Angels. Back and this time we're talking about software. And we're going to check out some cool products from Elgato. Thank yes. you for coming back. No problem at all. We're having Thank fun, you. aren't we? Yes, we so are. Last time we spoke about the PC that mm -hmm. you built, Dream PC, and yeah. hardware, how to get going. This time we're taking a look at software. We are. So it's not quite as simple as having your PC and away you go. You do need a little bit of software, don't you? So what do you, you start do. off with? Okay, so I mean your main lifeline to the internet is OBS. So I use OBS Studio. There's two different programs, the OBS Standard and the OBS Studio. Um, this will be your core setup for the scenes and how they look and your connection to the internet and settings on how you want it displayed and what quality you want it displayed on other people's monitors. And how easy is that to use? Is it pretty easy to get going? It is, if you know what you're doing straight away. I mean, the settings-wise can be a little bit tricky, but once you jump in and you have a look around, it's quite easy to sort of pick up, and it kind of becomes a little bit like a jigsaw later on. Okay. The more you use it, the easier it is to work out and go straight to the settings you need to. Um, but initially, it can be a little bit like, oof, okay, what, what, what do all these mean? Um, scenes wise you can make it as simple or as complex as you would like so you can make it with just one scene with a webcam and a game in the background and that's it or you could have multiple cameras for instance one of my scenes um, especially for virtual reality streaming which also, all I also do I have two cameras and I'm my cameras are layered in between the game so cool. I, you actually see me in virtual reality holding whatever I'm holding in the game instead of just seeing me and the webcam. How amazing. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, it sounds pretty cool to me. So I think it's just, as you alluded to there, it's just a case of sort of getting going and then you kind of learn as you go, don't you? So yes, you can start off kind of quite simple mm -hmm. and then build it up as your knowledge yep. grows. So that's kind of your basic setup. How do you take it to the next level? So to make things easier, especially when you have multiple scenes on OBS, uh, you can get a product from Elgato called the Stream Deck. Um, this is very handy because if you have three or six or ten scenes, something that I have, have quite a few scenes on my setup. Um, you can assign buttons on the stream deck and when you just press them it does everything for you. It changes the scene, you can run an ad, mm. you can check how many viewers you have, you can even send out a tweet if you forgot to say that you're live on social media and you're already live on the stream, you just press a button if you've assigned it and it wow. sends the tweet off. How pre, amazing. Pre yeah. That's pretty cool isn't it? So you talk there about having maybe up to 10 scenes, but I guess the, the simple question is, what is a scene then? What, what constitutes yeah, a scene? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a brilliant question. Um, when you start streaming, initially you don't want to be straight on the webcam or uh, you won't want people to see you straight away. You may be doing other things in the background while gathering your viewers or getting them ready before you change your scene. So the first scene would be going live soon. So it could just ah, be okay. a really nice moving background with a text saying going live soon and a countdown or something like that. Um, so I have that. I then can move over to an intro. So I actually have um, kind of a movie style intro with loads of different cutscenes that, that appear when I change to it. And that sort of introduces me and then it moves over to uh, the big webcam scene. So usually streamers have two. When you're just chatting to your audience and there's not a game in the background, you'll have the webcam quite large, a nice background if you've got a green screen, um, and that's just your like, hey, how are you doing guys, etc, etc. Uh, then you can move on to a gaming scene, and again you can make this as complex or as simple as you would like. Um, I Mine is very complex, um, but you can move over to the gaming scene and then there'll be like a little you either in a box uh, if you don't have a webcam with like a background showing or you can have a green screen and it's just your little your little self in the corner with a, um, a game in the background uh, you can also have outros so my outro is um, gifs so there's loads of like moving pictures of me in <laughs> very either funny situations when I've been scared playing a game or anything like that towards the end it just says thank you for streaming it oh thank you for watching at the top yeah. and some pictures of me or get moving gifts of me <laughs> in the middle. I love it. It sounds really good fun and very yeah. creative. You must have an awful lot of fun coming up with those ideas. And yes. Do you change yes. them a lot? How often oh, do you yeah. change them? Oh yeah, I mean them? if you're a creative person that's where it really brings out that creative side because you can make it look any way you want. You can make borders around the whole 
series or the whole uh, stream in general. You can add little details, you can create your own logo, uh, you can change the colour scheme. For me, my backgrounds and my colour scheme changes each and every month. So every month there'll be a different theme and a different colour scheme um, and I might change where things are placed depending on the game that we're playing. Certain games may have the health bar at the bottom left hand corner. Some games may have the health bar at the top yep. or on the right hand side. If you're hiding that or if your webcam is in the way of that, you kind of have different scenes for where you want your webcam or what layout you want for what particular game as well. So yeah, you can be very creative with it. It's a bit like having your own TV gallery, isn't it? Like yes. a little vision mixer, a little yes. production team hidden away. Um, it sounds very exciting indeed, but I guess the obvious question is, whilst it sounds amazing, is there a lot of work that has to happen beforehand? Is it easy to use? Do you have to have a knowledge of certain um, software or programming or anything like that? How, how easy is it? No, because I didn't going into it. I honestly didn't. I opened up this uh, software or this, this program and I was like, oh my God, what are these settings? Okay. And I literally just Googled the internet, found out what I needed to know and you learn as you go on. The more you use it, the more you learn, the more you are interested in finding out what yeah. else you can tweak. But no, everyone, it brings out the creative side in you and you just learn as you go. So it's pretty simple to get started, yes. but as you go, you can obviously get more complex, a bit That's more creative. It, yeah. I love it. Um, let's talk about a capture card though. Is it imperative that you have a capture card or can you stream without? Depending on your setup, if you've got a single stream setup and you're only streaming from your PC, so PC games, you'll be fine. If you find that you need a dual stream setup, so some streamers, when it gets very complex, um, will separate because of the intensity on the CPU and GPU will separate uh, to two PCs. So they'll have a stream PC and a gaming PC, meaning that they'll be streaming on one PC and it will be capturing everything okay. while not affecting the game or having to reduce the quality or creating lag. The other game will be gaming and you capture it via a capture card. So that's what it does. It grabs the picture from one PC and puts it on the other. Another thing to do, because I don't have dual streaming at the moment, um, but another thing you can do is you can use a capture card to capture from a console or from another device that isn't technically part of that one PC and the capture card just links it through and it appears there's a picture that you can then put on, on your stream. Amazing. So it very much depends on your setup as to whether you yes. need a capture card or not. Um, is there anything else that you need, any other products that you need to get going? Uh, I mean, you can go all out and if you've got like a DSLR camera or really high quality, you know, um, camcorder or something like that that you'd like to use as your webcam, instead of the general webcam that you can get from any PC store, you can use uh, the Elgato CamLink and that just connects any sort of camera to your PC and you get a higher quality. Oh, amazing. And again, is that quite simple to use? So the cam link is really simple to use. It's just a USB converting a HDMI into a USB that goes straight into your PC. So the Stream Deck is really easy to use out of the box, but obviously, as we've established, you can get a little bit more creative, a bit more yes. complex. Um, but the big question is, I guess, it sounds like it's going to be expensive. Is it expensive? In my opinion, no, not really. It does so much. And you can get this for less than £140. And the Elgato... Stream Deck Mini has just come out, which is as little as £90. Oh, fantastic. When you consider everything that it does, like we said, it's a bit like having your own mini TV gallery, yes. isn't it? Yes, exactly. So you mentioned there in one of your scenes, there's a green screen. So talk us through the setup that you use. So a green screen is literally just a green background. You can have other colours, but green is the one that technically will work better with anything else in front of it. I use the Elgato green screen, which is a pop-up green screen. It literally pops up and pops down. It's just like a projector screen. Amazing. Well, thank you very much. Some amazing products there. And all of the products that we've featured in this video, you can get at scan.co.uk. That's all for this episode. Don't forget to join us for our fourth and final episode where Cyborg Angel will be back sharing her top tips and tricks if you want to start your journey to becoming a pro streamer.